Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video and today we're here with a reaction to ranking every number one overall pick in the 2000s. So I assume this is going to be on the draft, I'm pretty sure it will be. And I don't know, these kind of videos really interest me. I know they're not everyone's cup of tea and that's fair enough, but for me, I really enjoy seeing about which players were number one and which, like where they led to. Because I know, again, not the number one picks are supposedly the best ones in that moment. So I'm just interested to see who is number one picks and to know if I've no like, I've heard of any of them before. Like, see what their past has been like. So let's just get in. Tom Brady recently turned 42 years old. That's it's crazy not hidden too. the fact that he was overlooked during the 2000 NFL draft, mostly untalked about throughout the process. Oh, Nowadays, wow. We Wait, when is this overlooked? About... Well, I'm going to search it because I need, I need to start like looking at correct like things. When is this overlooked? Does that mean he wasn't picked? Tom Brady overlooked. Over. Who really dropped? 199th. <sighs> Talk about. What the hell? How did that lead to him being seen as basically the best ever or top five best ever? That's, that just goes to show it doesn't really matter where you're picking. Tom Brady and what he's accomplished. That's insane. Besides the number one overall pick from the same draft, most people don't even remember who he was. <laughs> so we are going wow. to look at the number one pick from the year that Tom Brady was drafted, along with the rest of the number one picks throughout the 2000s. That's nuts. And see how their careers turned out. With that, I'm going that. to rank these guys on a tier list that I made. Yeah, mate, because that's a big thing in that. Tiers. I'll be using the top two picks from the 1998 NFL Draft as a reference. Peyton Manning and Ryan yeah. Leith. At the so top of the list, we have the Manning tier. Peyton Manning embodies what everyone wants in a number one overall pick. A storied NFL career claiming five MVPs, a bunch of NFL Freaking records, hell. and what multiple career. Super Bowls. Then after that, when did he retire? What year was it? And how long was his career? Was it as long as long as pros long and prosperous as Tom Brady? In descending order, we have possible Hall of Fame, pretty good, average, disappointing, and lastly, the Leaf tier. Ryan Leaf. Leaf was a player that scouts argued could have gone number one overall before <laughs> Peyton Manning. After being selected second in the 98 draft, Leaf's career couldn't have gone any worse. He barely lasted three seasons, becoming wow. one of the biggest draft busts of all time. The Jeez. disappointing <laughs> tier is when a player just can't get their career going or is riddled with injuries. But the Leaf tier? That's when a player is so bad or shows such a lack of professionalism that it becomes worse than simply <laughs> not playing well. It wow. becomes an all-out tragedy. I'm about to do a video on Leaf thing because he seems like he's had an absolute abysmal career. He had an abysmal career. Talk to me, all right? Knock it off! So, let's begin. I'm, intrigued. I'm actually really excited to see this, man. In 2000, the Cleveland Browns were trying to piece together their newly formed experience. This is the same year Tom Brady was made, After yeah. taking quarterback Tim Couch the year prior, Drafted. it was time for an edge rusher, and Penn State's Courtney Brown fit the mold. The 6'4", 271-pound defensive end dominated in college, 4.5240, and had a 37-inch vertical jump. Jeez. Number one seemed like a no-brainer. Although his rookie season was slightly underwhelming, he began to show promise in year two, achieving four and a Wait, half sacks in just I'm confused. Is it my computer that's last five games? But the year eventually ended in knee surgery. Unfortunately, uh, this would be foreshadowing for the rest of his career. That's After unlucky. three more seasons of injuries and a lack of production on the field, the Browns let him go. He would spend one year with the Broncos before being cut prior to the 2007 season after failing to pass a physical, thus marking the end of his playing days. Wow, that just shows how short a career can really be. That's unlucky though, because obviously he showed promise and then he just... When someone's career is cut short by injury, that's got to be the worst. How his NFL career turned out, he the belongs worst. in the disappointing tier. With the uh, first selection in the 2001 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Michael Vick. Oh, so I can only tell he's going to be one of the best because I've heard this guy many times. And I've not actually done a reaction to him, but I've heard of his name a lot. Virginia Tech. Throughout so I'm going to say he's Hall of Fame. Michael Vick was must-watch TV. He elevated the Falcons with two playoff runs in his first oh, three ma. seasons as the full-time starting quarterback. The high point of his Falcons career came during the like playoffs that. in 2003 when he went head-to-head -head against Brett Favre in Lambeau and beat him soundly. 
He has a lot of the same tools that Steve Young has. Oh my! Oh God! Fair Following play. the dog fighting scandal and two year suspension, they could make a return. Oh, it's him. Maybe that's why I've heard of him. Then maybe it's for the wrong reasons. Maybe he's not a Hall of Famer because people are saying this guy's. He got like I don't know what the correct term is, but he got like caught for having dog fighting or like having his own dog fighting thing. Which is absolutely mental. That's just so. And surprise many. He was the comeback player of the year in 2010, putting up the most efficient passing stats of his career and led the Eagles to the playoffs. Wow. Overall, Dick's skill set was very special. He is the all time leading rusher among quarterbacks. And along with that, he Jeez. made a few postseason runs and lit up the league for multiple seasons. He should be high on this list. But due to him missing time for prison and constantly oh, being prison. unable to play due to injuries, he belongs in the pretty good tier. I was kind of close. I completely forgot about that. 2002 and NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select David Carr. Like Tim Couch a few years earlier, David Carr was going to be the first selection to a brand new expansion franchise. Expansion franchises normally struggle for a few seasons when they get started. The Texans were no exception. David Carr would start day one. The most notable stat from his rookie year was that he got sacked a whopping 76 times. The fact that he wow. survived all 16 games and didn't get hurt is quite an accomplishment among itself. Jeez, look at them five stats. Times a game is going he has double fourth. <laughs> the fourth most sacked players, he has double that, more than double. Yo, that guy must have got absolutely like, done in. Going to take a toll, whether that's physically or mentally. Carr would start for five seasons with the Texans, leading them to a measly record of 22 and 53 and threw more interceptions than touchdowns. Three of those seasons, he was sacked more than any other quarterback in the league. Carr would make a brief appearance in Carolina before finding himself as the backup in New York until he retired in 2012. He uh. belongs in the disappointing tier. This isn't necessarily all his fault. The Texans also play a major role in the failure of his career. The uh, first choice in the 2003 draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Carson Palmer. How Carson Palmer's career began had given Cincinnati hope. In his second season as the starter, the Bengals went 11 and 5, where he put up some really impressive numbers and made the Pro Bowl. But in the oh, playoffs, nice. Palmer would suffer a two touchdowns, knee 12 interceptions. And in what many Bengals fans feel was the difference in that game. Although Palmer's career stats in Cincinnati are pretty solid, how he left would leave a bitter taste in the mouths of Bengals fans. Some drama unfolding with the Bengals. WCPO TV in Cincinnati <sighs> is reporting a source wow. close to Carson Palmer says the quarterback claims he'll never step foot in Paul Brown's oh, Jeez, he's born retire. What the hell? The team that I paid you, and the fans that supported you, you'd rather retire. In an interview done Come by on. NFL Films producer Steve Trout, Palmer had grown increasingly frustrated with the organization over the years, saying wow. they disrespected his backup, John Kidna, how they needed to get an actual general manager, and the organization as a whole needed to modernize. Things got very heated between Palmer and owner Mike Brown. And on a Reddit thread titled, What Happened Between Carson Palmer and the Bengals? Apparently, quote, after a loss, some Bengals fans went to Palmer's house and dumped wow. a bunch of trash on his lawn. He Bro, this is nuts. Yet, just his wife and two toddlers. She was pretty freaked out. The rumor at the time was that Palmer's wife told them that she was leaving Cincinnati for good. He could either join her or get divorced. To clarify, Jeez. this is just a rumor. Not sure if it's fully true, but wow. it is interesting nonetheless. Years later, after a short, disappointing stint with the Raiders, at the age of 36, Palmer would put up the best season of his career, 4,600. That makes no sense. I find that sort of stuff crazy how a player, supposedly out of his prime, I guess people, like humans are all different. I mean, I guess there's no definitive answer that people at 29 will be at the peak. Some people will be at their peaks in different times. I just find it crazy that at 36, he's had his best season, seasonal stats. Yards, 35 passing touchdowns, and led the Jeez. Cardinals to a record of 13-3. and three. They got pummeled Fair in enough. the NFC Championship, but Palmer definitely left his mark on the franchise that season. For relatively consistent play over the course of 14 years, and a couple of really outstanding seasons, oh, no, yes, average. he belongs in the pretty good team. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Was this a dramatic? 
<laughs> What's happening here? Throwing and it's intercepted. <laughs> What's going on? It's fascinating what? how much hate Eli Manning gets. I love he's this guy, I can't lie. Oh, together. Eli Manning, he sounds very familiar, actually, so I'm, I can see why. I don't actually know who he was from the moments, and his play has regressed over the last few years. But looking at what he's accomplished, he is outstanding in the playoffs statistically. That's Not just playoffs. Not to mention the fact that Fair his man. career passing numbers rank seventh all time. Plus, he doesn't wow. get hurt. He has been an Iron Man over the course of 14 years playing in all but one game. And it doesn't even make Wait. sense why numbers rank seven. Wait, let me hear that again. Plus, he doesn't get hurt. He has been an Iron Man over the course of 14 years, playing in all but one game. Jeez, that's... So he's like the most sort of reliable player. Because, I mean, does the position of a player sort of affect whether they'll get injured or not? Because I'm assuming this guy... Like, I don't really know who... Like, what players seem to get... The worst injuries and the most injuries compared to what players seem to get the least injuries. So I don't really think about it, but from that perspective, some players probably never get injured because of their position, and some players probably get injured all the time because they're constantly like running and dri like dribbling or like just running with a ball and getting fouled or tackled. So I guess it depends on what position. It doesn't even make sense why he didn't play in that one game. He definitely belongs in the possible Hall of Fame tier. Fair play. Eli has gotten it done on the biggest stage twice. There's only Jeez. a handful of quarterbacks who can say the same. The uh, first selection in the 2005 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Alex Smith, quarterback, Utah. Alex Smith's career can be described in one word, overshadowed. Although he went number one in 2005, the first round became about Aaron Rodgers. After dealing oh, with him. years of He's crazy, and struggle in San Francisco, Smith finally led the Niners to a hot start in 2011, just barely missing a chance to play in the Super Bowl. And keeping the momentum going in 2012, Smith would again play well, only to get hurt halfway through the season, oh. and then it all became about this guy. Then, he was shipped out of San Francisco in favor of Colin Kaepernick. Damn. Smith would join Amy American Reed. football is so brutal. I mean, I guess it's a performance, like, like a contract, the contract, like the sort of the loyalty depends on your performance. It's a performance-based game. If you aren't performing, I guess you just get thrown out of the bin as brutal as it sounds. I guess that is just how it is. You just have to be the top top. In Kansas City, where he would consistently lead them to the playoffs for years. Fair enough. After three Pro Bowl appearances in five seasons, the Chiefs would move on to a new guy who you may have heard of. The Kansas City Chiefs select Patrick Mahomes. Of course. Absolutely ended up in Washington last season, and it ended with a horrific leg injury. Alex Smith uh, is expected to miss this upcoming season due to an infection from leg surgery. He's uh, been a true professional his unlucky. entire career, even though he's gotten the short end of the stick many times. Still, he belongs in the pretty good... That's why I hate injuries, man. I mean, you can't help them, but some players, for their careers just to be finished because of injuries, or to be heavily affected because of injuries, it just it must suck. Imagine being in their position... I'm gonna say that they're still getting paid millions. Just it must feel so like draining. The uh, first selection in the 2006 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Mario Williams, defensive end, North Carolina State. Mario Williams is also an overshadowed number one pick. With Reggie Bush and Vince Young receiving all the hype in the 2006 draft, Mario quietly would have the best career of the three. He became a perennial double-digit sack guy by year two in Houston. Then, when he went to Buffalo, he put up consistently solid numbers, including all-pro status in 2014. Consistency, man. His career sort of took a nosedive after that, but he did play seven full seasons without getting hurt and reached four Pro Bowls in 11 years. He looks massive. He belongs in the pretty good tier. Look, with the first massive. pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select quarterback Jamarcus Russell, LSU. He Jamarcus sounds familiar Russell as well. Jamarcus Russell may be the most infamous number one overall pick ever. Coming out of LSU, he possessed an unbelievable oh, skill set as a quarterback. I need to get out of blocker for sure. I'm probably going to have to get up. I've got it on my Google Chrome, but I've got like an issue with that and it's not working right now, but... I will definitely still sort that out because I know it's quite frustrating for you guys to see it's consistent. Quarterback, he stood at a massive six foot six, two hundred and six. Wait, now we're on that. Who's the tallest ever player to play in the NFL, and who's the smallest? Because I need to see that. Six foot six. Imagine facing that. 
60 pounds. Oh. He could throw a football 70 yards on his knees. What was not a what? like? He threw it 70 yards on his knees? No way. Okay, I, I'm waiting to see a clip of that. Maybe not in a reaction, just in my own time, but that sounds... Um... The dude was a Madden creation come to life. However, the superhero-like appeal that Jamarcus Russell had would die quickly. It became shockingly obvious within the locker room right away. The story, as it was told to me, was Coach Filippo said, look, Jamarcus, we've got about 15, 20 plays that we want for this week. Here's a DVD for you. Tonight, I want you to watch these, okay? So Jamarcus is like, cool, he takes the DVD. So the next day they come to practice, you know, come to the facility, say, hey, Jamarcus, hey, how, how's that DVD? Did you look at it? What, what did it He's like, oh, coach, all the plays, I'm good. Whatever you want to run, let's do it. I like them. He said, okay, which ones you like? Five of them, do you like six of them, 10 of them? How much you like? Coach, whatever, I, I saw them, that we good, we ready to go. I, I can do them all. And Coach Filippo was kind of looking around and was like, it was a blank DVD. So he didn't watch the DVD, but he told everyone, oh, y'all watch it. I do. And that's when I think oh, they kind of wow. like, uh-oh, we're in trouble. He would barely last three seasons from a combination of laziness, issues off the field, and an inability to grasp what it took to be an NFL quarterback. He was so bad, he told NFL teams he would play for free, and no one cared. There's no surprise here. He belongs in the dreaded... And he was number one. How can a number one... Have a career. That's Leaf crazy. Tier. The differences between the 2007 and 2008 number one overall picks was immense, going from a never before seen quarterback to an offensive lineman. But unlike the Raiders, the Dolphins' bet actually paid off. Jake Long became a difference maker right away. He would end up going to four straight Pro Bowls, but like many others, he would play through injuries and it would eventually cost him. Uh, his bad hey injuries, man. Eventually, he had to call it quits at the age of 31, never wow. returning to that Pro Bowl level of play that he had achieved early in his career. He was elite, but because it was short lived, he belongs in the pretty good tier. Uh, that's, that sucks. The Detroit that Lions sucks. select Matthew Stafford. Florida, Florida. Matt Stafford has been a consistent. I love how at the draft they've got they've got the fans there. That's so cool. It's just so different. Oh man, it's so it's so cool seeing the difference in Stafford. In year three, he put up MVP like numbers, wow. throwing for over five thousand yards and forty one touchdowns. Jeez. That's more than any other quarterback on this list. Although he hasn't had much postseason success, this isn't all to blame on him. He consistently dealt with poor defense and zero run game. Stafford is only thirty years old, which means that he could still play for another ten years or so. Oh He's wow! He's statistically to be one of the best all time as of right now. He also belongs in the pretty good Fair team. enough. For the most part, number one picks end up being pretty solid, with the occasional player who is riddled with injuries or just isn't very good. Then there's this guy. These next two games, two of the greatest quarterbacks <laughs> in the history of the NFL, Brett Favre and then, uh, then Peyton Manning and Jamarcus <laughs> Russell. Oh, I love Peyton, like <laughs> man. This video is so awesome. So that was a really cool video, I'll tell you what. I love these kinds of videos because it just sort of it's showing me like, how, like it's just it's not even just showing about specifically the draft, it's showing about the players from the draft and like what their careers led to. But I guess it shows that number one, like it's not always guaranteed to be the best player, but it's, you're you're like 70-80% likely to get a top quality player, which is I guess is the whole point of the draft. But yeah, that was a cool video. Any other suggestions like this, just comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Like, subscribe, peace.